Hello everyone, my name is Mason. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing some more VMA reviews. Now, as it turns out, um, oh god, the idea of making 61 different videos for these things is a little difficult. However, I still want to finish the series on the channel. So what we're going to do is we are going to update the format. I'm going to be doing this QBR style, which is basically, in, in this video, I'm going to review the next three VNAs, which is books 13 through 15. And then from then on, I'm going to be doing them in five book intervals. That way I can do those quicker and then I can get the rest of the VNA book tag out quicker whenever I eventually finish that. So yeah, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. Sorry to anyone who doesn't really want it to be like that, but honestly there are some books coming up which I don't feel confident in making literal eight minute long videos about. So yeah, we're going to be talking about three separate books this video. It's going to be Deceit by Peter Darville Evans, Lucifer Rising by Jim Mortimer and Andy Lane, I believe, and White Darkness by, I want to say, David McKinty? Is that right? Yes, David McKinty. So let's start it off with Deceit, book 13 of the V&As. The middle of the 25th century, the Dalek War is drawing to an untidy close. Earth's Office of External Operation is trying to extend its influence over the corporations that have controlled human-occupied space since man first ventured to the stars. Agent Isabel Defries is leading one expedition. Among her barely controllable squad is an explosive expert who calls herself Ace. Their destination? Arcadia. A non-technological parada paradise? A living laboratory for a centuries-old long experiment? Fuel for a super being? Even when Ace and Benny discover the truth, the doctor refuses to listen to them. Nothing is what it seems. So yeah, Ace came back, which is something that they had been planning to do ever since she left back in Love and War. And she's quite a bit different now, actually. Ace at this point has been in this space marine kind of thing for about three years now. So she's a lot more of a soldier now. She She's still the same character, but she's a lot more mature than before. And Deceit portrays this idea very well, I think. By the end of it, I was sold on this idea of what most fans call New Ace. And the book does a very good job at, I guess, returning Ace to the main cast without also making the ending of Love and War seem less important. A similar example is when uh, Clara came back in Hellbent after being killed in Face the Raven. But the difference here is that there's actual stakes and the ending of Love and War didn't imply that she couldn't come back. So yeah, we get new ace and it's cool. The book feels almost like Doctor Who does Mass Effect, which I really like Mass Effect, so that's always kind of cool. The Doctor loses his memory again, which I'm going to be bringing up a lot as over the course of this series. Um, and we also meet a character called Doc, and Doc is quite possibly the strangest thing in this franchise, and I do mean all of it. Doc is a Dalek killer, and he was a character in the comics that Peter Tarvel Evans, the author, decided to bring over to this book for some reason. I don't know why, but he's here, and he's cool. I give the book a 4 out of 5. There are some little issues with prose that made it a little difficult to read, and I was just kind of skimming through it waiting to meet New Ace because I knew she was going to be in this book. But the book itself is pretty good. There's a lot of interesting imagery, which um, if you look at the cover, you can know that pretty well. And yeah, we are introduced to what will be our TARDIS team for quite a while, which is the Seventh Doctor, Bernie Summerfield, and New Ace. Anyway, that's Deceit. Let's get on to Lucifer Rising by those two authors. Yeah, this is actually the first book in the Virgin New Adventures to be co-authored which is pretty cool. Ace is back, and she is not in a good mood. Bernice has asked the Doctor to bring the TARDIS to the planet Lucifer, site of a scientific expedition. Its history to her, the exploration of alien artifacts on Lucifer came to an abrupt halt three centuries before she was born, and she always wondered why. Uncovering the answer involves the Doctor, Bernice, and Ace in sabotage, murder, and the resurrection of an eons-old alien power. Are there angels on Lucifer? And what does it all have to do with Ace? 
So yeah, right off the bat, we are thrown into quite an interesting story arc with Ace that I would say goes on past this book, but it's very prevalent in this one, which is Ace is a bit mysterious this time, and she's a bit like the Seventh Doctor was to her when she used to travel with him, which is kind of manipulative. Now, so this book is basically a whodunit which turns into Annihilation. Now, if you know anything about my channel, you know that I use Annihilation metaphors way too often. However, there's a thing in this book which exists in like seven different dimensions, and it just kind of looks weird. In fact, actually, if I bring over my copy of Born, you have this weird creature design on the cover. It kind of looks like that, I would imagine. Now, there are two authors in it, which can be interesting in the case of some books where the two authors' writing styles really don't mix. For this book, however, that's not really a problem, which I'm very happy about. It's the same length as most of the other VNAs. I think it's a little longer. And it has the same amount of story being told, I would say. Which probably doesn't make sense, but just go with me. Um, it, it all feels like just a another good Doctor Who story, except it was written by two people, which is kind of impressive. Like with the Zygon two-parter in um, season nine, I think that was also written by two authors, but it was a two-parter, so they had more time to expand on the story. This book, it's just, a, it's just one book, it's about the same length, and it doesn't feel cluttered with a bunch of different author voices, which is awesome. I give this book a 4.5 out of five. And finally, for this video, we have White Darkness by David McKinty, who is an author that I am a little less fond of than most people who read the VNAs. I am not a massive fan of this novel, but first, before we get into all that, let me give you guys a plot synopsis. The Doctor's last three visits to the scattered human colonies of the Third Millennium have not been entirely successful. And now that Ace has rejoined him and Bernice, Life on board the TARDIS is getting pretty stressful. The Doctor yearns for a simpler time and place. Earth. The tropics. The early 20th century. The TARDIS lands in Haiti in the early years of the First World War, and the Doctor, Bernice, and Ace land in a murderous plot involving voodoo, violent death, zombies, and German spies. And perhaps something else. Something far, far worse. Pretty dang good plot synopsis, I'll give it that. So yeah, this book takes place in Haiti in the First World War, which is a really cool idea for a setting. So yeah, it's pretty interesting to get the story of Haiti, which is not really an area explored in Doctor Who. I just wish I liked the book more. I will say I am a little biased against the historical stories because, not that I don't like them, but I think I'm more intrigued by these weird sci-fi concepts which is part of the reason why I liked Lucifer Rising so much, because of this creature that lives in seven dimensions. And this does have some cool sci-fi stuff, and the historical aspects of it are also pretty interesting. I personally didn't really get a lot out of, like, main characters and their own plights in this world. Oh, also the Doctor has a new outfit. Basically, he just kind of wears a white suit now, and then like a white fedora or something, which is a cool look for Sylvester McCoy, I think. I don't really have much else on White Darkness. I give it a three out of five. Um, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, not not by a long shot, and it's better than most of those middle of the road books I've mentioned before, like uh, Time Warp Apocalypse or The Pit, but um, it's just kind of a story. The historical stuff's interesting, but beyond that, it doesn't really stick out in my mind that much. But yeah, those are my little mini reviews for those three VNAs. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more from me, then subscribe to the channel, comment down below what, what you'd like to see me do next. Um, next time I'll be reviewing, in this series, I'll be reviewing the VNAs 16 through 20. I'm not too sure which ones those are. I'll, I'll, I'll have to write them down. But hope to see you guys then. If you liked the video, then leave a like and then do all that stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, read Annihilation.